Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Well, today I have a surprise. Finally, after three months, 6887 November is back at the hangar at Orange County MGJ. Is the airport identifier, my home base here. Uh, so there she is. So, and the panel is ready to go, it's installed. I flew it back yesterday. Um, late yesterday uh, the weather was perfect it was calm it was great um, I didn't videotape anything because honestly guys I was kind of nervous myself flying it back with a whole glass panel I uh, on the ground for a little bit and came back to the airport on the ground plugged her in so I using the battery and messed with it for quite a while so no video of, of the return return trip from Mount Pocono um, but let's go over the panel right now and I'll show you guys what I was working on for three months so here is 6887 November, we all know this airplane. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, plug in, make sure I got the positives, the negatives. I didn't wanna blow the, the whole plane up already. I just got it back and I'm gonna plug it in. This way, when I start up the panel, it will not... When I start up the panel, it will not drain the battery. So let's hop in. It's good to have her back, that's for sure. And I'm still getting used to everything. So again, another reason why I did not fly it back on video. So much to learn, I still got things to go over. I still gotta have to program some things. Let's throw these down there. But here is the panel, hopefully there's no glare from the outside. There's me in the glare of that. Uh, but there is the panel. We'll zoom over. So Skyview HDX. You have the IFD 540, SL30, and you have the COM, of course. Uh, hard keys, track, a barometer, and the altimeter. And this is going to be where the autopilot's going to be. So that's going to be where the autopilot's going to go for the hard keys. So let me scoot it back over here. And matter of fact, with you guys, I'm going to take off the little plastic piece here. Oops. Off. Look at that. Now I'm really in trouble. So let's take this one off. All right, now it's broken in. <laughs> so, so there is the panel. There's a backup from, from Avidyne. I'm sorry, from uh, Dynon. I'll pull that off. Okay. There we have it. So, I move my seat up because I gotta move my seat up. Okay, so we're gonna put the battery master on. Then radio. Battery master, then radio. Put that on. Kirk did a great job for motor aviation, folks. I mean, look at this beautiful panel. You would think you're in 2000 and, uh, well, 2020 uh, Mooney instead of a 1968 Mooney M20C Ranger. They did a great job. They built basically all this from scratch. Um, so the only thing, the only thing I do have to do, these seats, I mean, my Mooney compared to my buddy's Mooney, you know, guys know Pat, uh, he has a 1969 Mooney Ranger. His seats are a little bit higher because he has the same kind of height panel when I fly with him. And so I lost probably about this much or so, maybe this much or so of space. Um, and with this on here, it's kind of until it breaks in a little bit, this is all new. Um, I, I'm, I'm too low. So I can, I can just see over like that basically um, and I'm six foot and so we have to get that taken care of that's not a, that's not a big deal so as you can see it's flashing because it's trying to get a GPS and uh, positioning and then there you go um, but there is the 
Steinon Skyview HDX in a 1968 Mooney M20C Ranger. Brand new panel, I love the dump gray, it came out great. Uh, and of course you have your backup from Dynon, they call it the EFIS uh, D10A. So that's, that, again, it's just a backup turn coordinator. Uh, but yeah, there you have it. Finally, back in Orange County, and of course here's the Avidyne 540, IFD 540. And I'm, again, I'm still learning how, how all this stuff even works, to be honest with you. Uh, so I had a very, um, not difficult time flying it back, but really nervous flying it back because there's a lot of things I, I, I gotta know when I was rotating, you know, the speeds. So here's the tape for the speeds. Your altitude indicator, turn coordinator, your bank. So it's all right there. And, matter of, and it, so you have it on this screen too, which is pretty cool. Matter of fact, let's do this. Let's accept the caution. It's gonna say it's off. Accept the caution. And then we'll go to display. We'll make this a full screen. That's the map, as you can see. And then let's make this go to uh, display and we'll go to full screen. Oh, I don't want to do that. I'm still messing around with this thing. Let's go back to this. Let's go to display. Let's go to this. Okay. So here's your map. And once you have your, all your traffic on here, weather all, all, all on here, um, zoom in, zoom out. So we're at Orange County, MGJ. And there's my hangar pretty much right next to uh, 22004. Um, for the most part, and then go back to the. There you go. So there you have. You can move this. You can move everything around if you want. You have your my. Uh, this is actually my plane now, not the demo. I was using at uh, more aviation, but here's my fuel tanks. Uh, 24 each side, but I got 22 on the right, 16 on the left. They had a hard time calibrating this. They had to do a couple different things, and of course your inches uh, right here. RPMs, okay, um, hours per gallon, I mean, gallons, per, gallons per hour, you have your, uh, my fuel pressure, oil pressure, and oil temperature, I'm hoping this is not blurry with you, this is the caution says here, caution, uh, yep, battery of course, okay, um, and then it's pretty easy, so if your altimeter, right here, you can push that, and you can say, say you want to take off, you can go up to uh, take off and say ATC it you know, clears you to 3000. You know, you put that in there, and as you get closer to 3000, it'll call out altitude. The same thing when you bring it down to approaching altitude, it'll do your minimums, it'll do your five over, uh, and everything else. So it's really, really cool um, system. And then, of course, you have your battery voltage and your amps, of course. And I didn't know this, but they actually got this to work. I don't know if you guys can see it with this camera. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. I won't know until I edit the stuff. But right here, you see the green light there. Um, gear is down, then gear up. So that's pretty cool. Now I did keep this also, and I can turn this off, turn on, high, low, whatever, uh, because I just like to have that visual as I'm scanning the panel um, with the gear up or down, um, which is cool. I, I want it kind of right there. And what is this? So that is really neat. So. There I have it. I, I did add a push to talk on the co-pilot side on the dash. I don't want to put any holes or anything in here. I don't want it to crack. I'd be more of a mess right now. Um, so I got to push the talk there. And of course, everybody always asks, "What's this about?" Well, playback. Uh, I think I think it can play back up to five times back. I guess. Um, ident transponder. And of course, pressure. of course, the autopilot disconnect, which is not in op right now. Um, but that's where the autopilot is going to go, right there. Um, and I'll put right now, I'll show you what it's going to look like. So that's what it's going to look like. And then of course, well you're probably saying to yourself, where is your transponder? Well, Hey guys, real quick again, I'm going to add this into this video. Uh, my last video I did, I said that um, Dynon uses S-Tech uh, servos for the um, autopilot. That is incorrect information. I apologize. It was miscommunication uh, on my end, so I apologize. Dynon does their own autopilot and makes their own servos, so it's 100% Dynon, uh, made in the U.S., of course. 
So I apologize. So you cannot use other servos if you want to install the Dynon's autopilot. You got to use Dynon's servos with their autopilot. So sorry for that wrong information. So I'm going to correct that right now. So uh, see you guys. The remote transponder, how I get to it. Um, now I'm going to move. Let's go back to map here. Go to map. So I'm, I'm going to go and get this done the way I, how I want it and set up. So there's a lot of different personal um, references you can do. You can set up way, whatever way you want to set it up. I got to mess with that. Like I said, there's a lot of things to mess with. Uh, but to get the transponder, you push this once, twice. Here's your transponder. You, you can touch it, and it brings everything up for you. So standby, ground, on, altimeter. It does everything for you. Um, but if ATC calls out. Uh, you just hit that button twice and it'll bring it right up uh, and you just hit it and type it in what it is and then whoops I do here and then your ident button is uh, where is it right there or I can hit ident from this as well and of course I still have I kept this for a backup I remember I explained to you guys before the SL30 that was a great unit hardly used from the previous owner very rarely I rarely used it so I, I used the, um, the Garmin uh, 480, I think I had, and uh, these are great units. So I kept this because I wanted to have the, the nav feature and the comm feature, um, which would also flip over to an HSI times two. So I can track a VOR, I can track GPS, I can get, you know, one. I think one's magenta and one is uh, um, tanning color. Like I said, I gotta mess with this whole thing. It does call out, it's getting traffic right now. Synthetic vision, so that's really neat. And then um, I could display, I, I can also take that away. There you go, let's see, go back to display here. And that is that, I gotta still figure a lot of things out. It's calling out traffic, I'm in the hangar. That's how great this system is. Okay, so one more thing I want to show you quickly. It's in a short video. I got a message there, okay, except is that you can go to uh, display and then we're gonna make this a full screen. And there you have a full screen with synthetic vision. And you can see all the airports out there too, uh, about north of me. Uh, I think that's I forget what the hell that is, but there's all the airports out there. You take synthetic vision off, you don't see that. Um, the nose is pointing up a little bit as I'm facing out. Um, and again, engine monitoring again on the bottom, and you can move that around however you want to do it. Uh, so, back to split screen and maps on both sides. So, basically, let's real quickly go back over everything. So, you have my backup. Um, turn coordinator from Dynon, you have to have a backup. I have my, uh, it's a little dark over here. So, um, well, so this is a Stratus uh, USB port. And the reason why I put two, there's one here, and there's one over here, is because I don't want to have one plugged in, like a, a cable plugged in here, and then plug in my iPad. If, if I put it, uh, saying caution, I, could my, I bet you my oil pressure is low. Uh, no GPS deal because we're in the hangar here. Um, so if I had something wire hanging from here, you know, all the way over around the yoke here and over here, for my iPad, having my knee or wherever, or a phone charging, and I want to put the gear, here's a Johnson bar, sorry about that little dark it looks like, the Johnson bar down or up, I don't want it to have to move the wire around or hit the wire and have a problem. So I have one over there for the passenger, and um, I have one over here, um, USB, two plugs for myself. But, so that's that, and we have, again, Skyview HDX from Dynon, 10 inch screen. We, I, again, I kept the, again, you really can't see it because it's a little dark in here, but uh, the SL30, so I have, I can turn it on, but it'll look, look a little better for you. Um, for, again, their nav slash comm unit, which works with the HSI right here. You can, it, it does this magenta line. And I have the Avidyne um, IFD 540, and of course, the audio panel, which I also got from uh, PS Engineering. Um, again, you really can't see it. Again, I have the hard keys. I can use the hard key over here if I want to. Okay. 
and I just click on it and do what I got to do over here or I, or I could even touch it and I can move it around or I can go right over to the hard key if I'm in flight turbulent air uh, track barometer altimeter and again right here is going to be what the autopilot keys are going to be and of course on this side I have the other 10 inch Skyview HDX uh, seven, the, the 7 inch screen was only 1200 bucks I think less so why not get the other 10 it's the same labor putting it in because the panel is already out so that's why I decided to do all that fun stuff and of course we have over here the fuses and then more fuses down below and they did a great job marking everything for me Another push to talk for the co-pilot. I never oil I, pressure. Saying now it's saying oil pressure because the plane's off. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I right hear it says I don't know if you guys can read or not, but it says oil pressure low. But it calls everything out for you. But push to talk for the co-pilot on the the, the, the uh, panel, which is fine with me. And of course, all my mixture and all other nonsense. Blah. And of course, over here we have. Now you really can't see it. Uh, the landing light. Let me see if I can put my. Let me see if I put my phone. Uh, on here. Here we go. Yeah, that's a little better. That's a little better. So yeah, and then you can see here. I have my landing light, position light, um, anti-collision light, pedo heat, strobe, strobe lights, um, master radio, then the uh, fuel pump, and then put my battery master. And then there's that. There's the light here, it's better. And there's the other um, status um, USB chargers. So that is the panel. I'm gonna get this, I gotta get that painted. Um, I noticed that, I forgot to actually have them paint it while it was there, but it's okay, not a big deal. Um, but what a great panel, it turned out very well. And I wanna thank Dynon, I wanna thank uh, Moyer from, uh, Kurt from Moyer Aviation. They did a great job with this panel. I'm very, very happy with everything that turned out um, and excited to fly it. Uh, I'm gonna fly a little bit more, get some, get used to everything. There's a lot to learn when you're all, uh, you know, steam, steam gauges for a long time, 15 years, and they got glass. It's, it's, it's really unique and different, but I, I can also throw a um, six pack if I want it to um, right here. And I can make that display and I can go to full screen. So I can have, which I played with on the way down. So I can, this is what I'm used to, <laughs> right? Remember my, my old panel, I'm used to all this. And it works like it's, and there's the turn coordinator. It works like it's a uh, six pack um, of steam gauges, believe it or not. It's, it's crazy. So I can always go to that if I get little disoriented with the tapes. So, but these are all the things, you can see it a little better, a little pressure low, um, that I'm going to learn on how to display is going to work. And I go back to menu, uh, PFD tools, and of course I can take the six pack off. I got a G meter, um, airport flags, and all that other stuff you can put in. There's so much more to learn. I'm going to go over with you guys in flight. I'm not going to do that today. Uh, the weather's actually changed, the rainy and cloudy and everything else. Uh, I want to pick a nice calm day um, to go over everything and then um, give you guys uh, good advice on what we need to do and how everything exactly works. But I want to do a quick video on the, um, the update and I, I hope that this is going to be, I, you know, I'm not going to hope this is perfect for me. I think it's just great. I think I'm going to keep this plane for a long time. Uh, so the money I put into it, I'm not concerned about because like I said before, there's so many planes out there uh, that are expensive. The 201s, Moonies, they're all 80 north of 80, you know, a little bit south of 80, some in the 90s, some 100,000. And they still need all this stuff. They still need a uh, you know a panel. They still need ADS in and out. Some of them, the paint's off, whatever. The engines are almost timed out. And I'm like, you know what? I, it's a Ranger. It's a perfect for me. I don't need the long body. You know, I mean, on a mid body, I'm fine with this airplane. It's exactly what I need it for for myself. I am very proud of the fact that you know, with Kurt's help from Warrior Aviation, we designed this panel the way I wanted it. We got it to work, um, and it's just perfect for me to do it. I need to do with my general aviation um, stuff that I'm doing and my love story continues and I always say that general aviation is a love story um, and it sure is because again you know we keep moving up in GA having having stuff like this offered to GA okay 
you know, in our capacity at a reasonable price from Dynon, because Dynon for 20 years uh, did um, experimentals. So only in the last four years they've gotten stuff certified. So they're always, we're GA um, company, a GA company. There's no corporate stuff. There's no no jet airliners. They have the Garmin or stuff. And then, you know, those companies are great companies, but uh, Dynon really focuses on GA and it's a family company. Uh, everything's made in the U.S. and I'm just proud about that. And they really helped me along the way here. And also they helped Kurt from our aviation with Kyle. Um, they both work great together and we came out with this great design and I'm hoping uh, people in the future see this um, get some pricing and if you're afford to if you're if you're capable of doing it if you got to get ADS-B in and out anyway you, you're, in your panel shot you want to upgrade to a, to a GPS um, and you got to do some stuff anyway and if you have a little bit of extra money it's okay to throw some little extra money at it to get something like this and believe it or not if you go on Dynon's website you you do you go through their their price points um, you'll be surprised how much stuff costs now you don't have to get two 10 inch screens, okay, with that. You can get one screen. One screen, I forget exactly, about $4,000. And then you add on some of the accessories, which is engine monitoring, it's not that much more money. And the reason why I didn't get a separate engine monitoring is because Dynon has it built in. It's every, everything is in one system, so it's great. Uh, and I don't wanna have to add anything else to this panel. I want it just like perfectly clean um, and healthy looking and it just it just everything just goes perfect for me um so enough of that folks short video here uh, if you have any comments or questions you can email me at pilotfund101 at gmail.com more videos to come obviously with the new system um again i'm sorry if i didn't i didn't put it on i didn't re record the way back from more aviation because it was new to me i want to concentrate on the radio because the radio is new to me on, on all that stuff and how to how to fly with the screen so i took my time i didn't want to have the pressure of having things on video uh with, with that but more to come uh also any you can email me again like i said uh i'm on facebook at pilot Fund 101 uh over 15,500, i believe now um, followers on facebook thank you so much for that support um and thank you for the support and the emails again of, of really appreciate those great comments you guys were emailing me and you can also drop any questions or any comments below on the youtube video so if you like what I'm doing, folks, consider subscribing to my channel. That again, that makes me my mojo keeps going. It makes me able to. It's worth me at that point. Keep doing the videos uh, because it feels like I'm giving you guys information um, that you guys deserve to have. That I didn't have that opportunity. I would love to share my experience and my aviation love story with you, folks, so you guys can make a decision based on my experiences. So, guys, like always, folks, fly safe, be safe, and I'll see you guys next time in the air with the Skyview from Dynon.